Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my video blog series. I'm your host Nick Renard and today we're going to be talking about display network targeting on Google AdWords. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're starting off with the table of contents here. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of the display network. It definitely has some uh, some advantages and disadvantages depending on how you're using it. So we'll go over where uh, I would recommend using it and not using it. Uh, I'll also go over the different types of targeting. Most people who know about the display network really only know about one or two of the types of targeting, but it actually has quite a wide range of ways that you can target people. Some of them are more useful, more applicable, depending on the situation or industry than others. And so yeah, we're going to go over that as well. So let's go ahead and start with the pros and cons. Uh, for the pros, uh, first off, there's a massive density of users that you can target. now. This can, I, uh, in a way, you could view this as a con, and um, and and if you look at the cons, one of the things that I mentioned is that it's difficult to manage properly. One of the reasons that it's difficult to manage is because the there's such a huge amount of users on the display network. If you don't if you don't target properly, or if you maybe you don't narrow it enough, what can happen is that you're you're you end up advertising to such a massive group of people that the majority of that traffic is going to be irrelevant. Uh, but that being said, the cost per click on the display network, you can see there's a third point here, the cost per click is so insanely low that even if a lot of the users that you're hitting with your ads is not the most relevant traffic, you can still kind of get away with it just because the cost per click is going to be anywhere from like four cents to nine cents sometimes, uh, as opposed to the search network where you can get clicks anywhere from, you know, like five bucks up to 50 bucks. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the big advantages. Uh, there's, there's a huge amount of users to target. If you're good with the display network, that's definitely an advantage because you can fill, you know, there's just a lot of people that you can be targeting with your ads. And yeah, anyways, um, let's go ahead and move on. There's lots of targeting options with the display network, as I mentioned before. Um, a lot of the people that I talk to only know about one or two, but there's actually like, I think like six or so different types that we can use. Uh, for targeting on the display network. We can also lace those kinds of targeting together so we can make it so that a user has to meet multiple pieces of criteria in order for us to uh, show our ads to them, which again is another kind of, it's a more advanced technique of, um, you know, since there's such a massive density of users, we can, we can use some of these techniques to target users more effectively. And then lastly here on the pros list is it's great for awareness. Again, cost per click, insanely cheap when something only costs like four cents if you're uh, if you know if you're allocating even like two thousand a month towards that that's gonna get you a massive density of clicks uh, whether or not those clicks are leading to sales or to um, uh, conversions or whatever you're looking for is a is a different question but in terms of getting your ads in front of people who are you know have are, are interested in the things that are kind of within your industry, uh, the, the display network is great for that. Uh, moving on to the cons here, again, it's difficult to manage properly, I already went over that. Uh, mismanaged campaigns will likely hemorrhage ad spend, went over that a little as well already too, um, it, since it's so big, if you if you maybe the the targeting that you think you put into your campaigns is is narrow enough but if if you're just targeting a bunch of random users we'll go over some examples here in a second you'll you'll understand a little better but yeah it uh, a lot of people when they try out the display network for the first time a month or two later they'll they'll think the display network is terrible with good reason if it if you don't manage it properly the results end up being awful. It'll just suck up spend and not do anything in terms of conversions. So um, anyways, we'll go over how to manage that better. Uh, another one of the cons is that it can be extremely high variance. I've seen and set up display campaigns for clients that have done nothing but waste money because it's just not good for certain people or certain industries. And I've also set up display campaigns that convert in, you know, it's just their best converter hands down. And it's essentially just printing money for their company. Um, and since there's, again, since there's such a massive density of users to target, when you do hit those gold mines of campaigns that, uh, that are profitable for you, you can dump a lot of money into those and make a lot of sales off them. So there, it, there's definitely a wide range of spectrum between it being the uh, potentially worst uh, platform, not platform, but network to be advertising on and also being potentially the best network to be advertising on. Um, and then the last con here is that oftentimes it's not 
gr great for conversion KPIs, key performance indicators. It uh, sometimes it is great for for sales and whatnot, or you know, trying to generate phone calls or leads or whatever you're looking for. Sometimes it's great for that, but I'd say that overall the display network is better for awareness. So for like you know, trying to get your brand name out there, kind of like billboard advertising or something like that. Uh, it, it's definitely uh, more geared towards that. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to some of the different types of display targeting. We'll start with keywords. The way display targeting works for keywords is it uh, it targets websites based on the keywords that's within uh, the writing that they have on their website. So whatever text people have on their websites, uh, it'll it'll target based on that. So you can you can upload keywords to the display network very similar uh, the way you do to the search network, but instead of uh, triggering queries based on what people are searching in Google or Bing or whatever, um, it's only triggering based off of the keywords that are showing up on other sites. Because again, remember these ads are showing up in the banner slots on other people's sites. So if you're bidding on a, on a keyword like, uh, let's say like apparel or something like that, uh, your ad will show up on any site that has the word, or you'll at least bid on, to show up on any site that has the word apparel on it. Now that could be good because if you're showing up on an apparel site like Nike, great. But if you're showing up on like some random forum that just happens to have the word apparel on it, not so great. So you can see how that, that kind of hemorrhaging spend thing comes into play, which is why we want to be careful with keyword targeting, and I'll go over some strategies here. Um, I will say that keyword targeting is not very useful for terms that overlap into a ton of different industries. So for example, if you bid on a keyword like software or app or services, those are going to overlap into just trillions of different industries, trillions, that's a big number, into lots of different industries. So if you're, if you're bidding on a keyword like software, I mean, that, that covers literally any website that has the word software on it. So <laughs> it's going to be pretty broad. So you want to be careful not to be too broad with your display keywords. And you, um, you want to try to think outside the box. Uh, again, it targets based on the keywords on other websites. So you want to think of what keywords might show up on those websites that would qualify that traffic as being relevant to your business. And I have an example here of if you, um, I always use dog training because I used to do I used to do dog training. Um, if if you had a dog training business, uh, a bad example or a bad an example of a bad keyword might be something like training or trainers or teaching. And the reason is because that's going to overlap into other industries like personal trainers or maybe like schools or universities or something like that. Uh, so you want to be careful with those kind of again kind of like the software and app and services examples. It it overlaps into too many things when you think about it. Uh, some good things to target might be words like veterinary or canine terminology because if if the um, you know, if, if something like veterinary shows up on a website, it's probably going to be, you know, maybe not specifically dog related, but it's going to be animal related. Um, anyways, you kind of get the idea. You you definitely have to use a little bit of theory crafting here and um, think of what might be showing up on websites that you think would be relevant. But uh, and yeah, and just test it and find out if it doesn't work, then shut it off and try something new. All right, so let's move on to placement targeting. Placement targeting is uh, it's you get you get to pick and choose which websites you want to advertise on. So if you wanted to show up on a banner slot for like Wall Street Journal, uh, you could you could insert that as a as one of your placements, and so that way you would be bidding to show up on the banner slots for that website. Uh, you can also search for placements that match the themes and topics you'd like to target. I'd say the overall placement targeting I don't use very frequently. There are specific applications for it where uh, I've had clients who said, you know, we specifically want to make sure that we're showing up on, you know, this list of 50 websites or something like that. In a situation like that, if you if you do have a list of websites that you know is good for you, then it's great. Uh, but if you um, if you only have like a, maybe like a couple websites that you can think of that might be good, or if you're, you know, you're just trying to fire them off off the top of your head of things that you might be good. Again, I'm, I'm just not the biggest fan of placement targeting. I think it's a little too narrow. I think they could do a better job with um, being able to search for placements that are relevant to you. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to bash it too much. Um, you know, if you, if you do have some websites that you want to show up, go ahead and try it out. Otherwise, let's move on. All right, topic targeting. Uh, topic targeting is my second favorite form of display targeting. 
Uh, it allows you to appear on websites or other placements that include content about the topics you choose. Uh, the reason that topic targeting is my second favorite form of targeting is because the list of topics that they have to choose from is extremely well fleshed out. They they have every single industry listed. So they have like, um, I mean, you can, there's some examples down here like sports, business, travel, arts, uh, transportation, like er everything. Um, so. I, I've never set up a, a campaign for somebody that used topic targeting and wasn't able to find a topic that was relevant to them. Sometimes there's, you know, only a handful of them that are relevant, but you will always find something that is relevant within their list of topics. If you go into AdWords um, and and you open up their topic targeting, they'll actually uh, send you to a hyperlink of the the list of all the topics that they have. I don't have it open right now. But uh, you can you can go there and look through their full list. It's they did a good job with their topic targeting. I really like it. Um, so again, yeah, ma massive lo list of topics to choose from, and uh, I think the main reason that that since there's so much to choose from, that if you if you know how to do it well, so if you know when you're uh, the amount of users you're targeting is overly or undersaturated, it, it's really easy to adjust by um, adding or removing different topics that you think may or may not be relevant or lacing in specific topics into other campaigns to try and um, narrow traffic or expand traffic can also be an effective form of advertising as well. All right. Now moving on to interest and remarketing. Now these are kind of two things, but they do put them into the same category. Uh, remarketing is definitely my number one favorite form of display advertising. Uh, the reason it's my favorite, my favorite form of display advertising, is because it converts the best, because it makes makes people the most money, which. I mean, that's what I'm paid to do, so <laughs> of course I like it for that reason. Uh, remarketing is, for those that you don't know, uh, you are try you're trying to entice users to come back to your website and convert. So you can see the little picture down here where a visitor comes to your website, and then they leave your website, and then your, uh, your remarketing ad will show up on other sites that that person is browsing around, so we track those users with cookies. And then that way, when they're browsing around on their other websites, then your ad pops up, and it kind of reminds them, like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to schedule a call with a lawyer. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to buy a car, or, you know, whatever, whatever they were browsing or whatever you're trying to sell them. Um, the reason that I love remarketing is a lot of our clients have uh, sales cycles that are significantly longer than um, something like an apparel industry where you just kind of decide today, like, eh, I think I'm going to go buy a pair of pants or buy a shirt. Like, those are those are more impulse buys, whereas something where, like the lawyer example, you don't necessarily just get a lawyer immediately, but you kind of shop around or you don't buy a car like the day that you realize you need a car. You, you shop around for sometimes up to, like, I mean, some sales cycles last up to a year. So being able to follow users around for however long your sales cycle is to try and keep getting them to come back, uh, it, it extremely effective uh, form of display advertising. Uh, the second one here is interest. Uh, interest is actually very uh, similar to topics. Um, I think they're kind of like close enough that they could all almost merge these two, but it reaches users based on the specific interests as they browse pages, apps, channels, videos, YouTube, stuff like that. So um, again, you're kind of targeting users based on the things that they do or like. So it's it's a similar concept. Uh, and it, it, the, same, the selection is also very similar where you get to select from a wide range of categories like auto, sports, travel, fashion, etc. All right. Moving on, and then uh, this is the last one here, demographics. Demographics, it sounds great. It, it sounds great to be able to target users based on demographics, but the, pr the only problem with demographic targeting is that it's extremely narrow. The only demographics that you can actually target users on is uh, gender, age, and parental status. <laughs> there's, there's a lot more demographics that people could come up with, but I think it has to do with uh, a lot of their privacy policies and stuff like that, that you aren't able to target users based on like race or sexual preference or things like that, because it, I don't know, because it's just not cool legally, I guess. But uh, you can, if, if you know that, for example, let's say you sell feminine hygiene products, you probably don't want to be targeting dudes. So you can, uh, you could eliminate that traffic through demographic targeting, uh, age is age is actually the one I use the most. A lot of our uh, a lot of our clients will tell us that yeah, no one under 
40 years old buys their product or no one over 30 years old buys their product. So we can set those uh, methods to exclude people of certain age groups. Uh, so that way, you know, we're targeting more relevant users. And then lastly, parental status. I've actually never targeted based on parental status, but I, I suppose if that was relevant in some way, then you could, um, you know, you could target parents or non-parents. So, yeah. Uh, again, demographic targeting is relatively narrow, but if it is applicable to, uh, you know, the user that you think you're trying to target, then definitely try to lace this into your display targeting campaigns. Anyways, that's all I have for, for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week for my next video blog.